back. All right. In our previous two videos, uh, in the first video, I covered the basics of auger, what's auger, uh, what's, uh, what are we using it for, what are we growing, and uh, carbon and nitrogen ratios, nutrition, and things like that. Second video, I walked you through uh, malt extract auger and additional information around how to make antibiotic or contamination resistant auger. Now, I'm going to show you how to remix this like a, um, a really cool DJ, but since I'm old, uh, fellow kids pick the DJ of your choice. Um, all right, so malt extract. Covering the base recipe again, we're going to start here. 15 grams auger auger, uh, auger auger powder, 20 grams of nutrition, one liter of distilled water. Put that into a glass bottle, sterilize that, 20 minutes at 15 to 16 PSI, depending on elevation. Bob John. Malt extract. Workhorse, super cheap, easy to make. Malt extract auger is 15 grams of auger auger powder and 20 grams light malt extract. This little powder right here. Now, let's talk about other nutrition sources. The first one could be honey. Yeah. Honey, like I grow lots of fungi on honey, liquid culture, and other things. Honey is very similar in carbohydrate and sugar structure as MEA and other syrups and sugar sources, right? So you just swap out that 20 grams of LME with uh, 20 grams of honey, right? And there you go. Um, now, sorghum. Sorghum is all the rage and I love it. The reason why is that sorghum syrup is a syrup that's derived from the sorghum grain. That sorghum grain happens to be very, 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 very close to the same profile as things like millet and other grains, right? In fact, you can get sorghum grain and use sorghum uh, otter or sorghum LC and put that directly to the sorghum grain. Now remember, in the video before this, I covered the reason why you would do that is you're going to grain, right? You want to pre-train your fungus on that nutrition source, right? So if you're using millet or sorghum grain or rye or something else like that, you probably want a nutrition source that is very close to the same chemical and nutritional profile as the auger that you're using, the LC and the grain, right? Because that will just help everything go super ultra fast, super ultra aggressive. You're gonna get better yields, better growth, better disease resistance every time when you train everything. So, sorghum is pretty great, sorghum syrup, right? So, all you do is again, we swap that 20 grams of LME to honey to sorghum syrup. So all I did was I literally just changed 20 grams of material in my base mix, done. Another option that you've probably heard about is potato dextrose. Potato dextrose is a mixture of dextrose or sugars mixed with potato water, right? You basically boil off the starches and everything else from that potato and get that into a nice homogenized mixture, add the dextrose, Bob's your uncle. So you get what I'm saying, you can actually do a lot of really cool and interesting things with these recipes, right? For example, what if you wanted to replace the distilled water with water that you use to cook your grain in, right? So for example, let's say that you're boiling uh, your millet, which I don't, I know soak, I know simmer, long story but let's say you're boiling your grain take the water from that boil strain it out of all the crap and then replace that distilled water with that grain water same net effect as adding sorghum syrup right because when those spores germinate or the fungus takes hold on that auger plate it's going to start memorizing the nutritional profile of the water you just added. So with a very, 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 very basic recipe, the sky's the limit. Now, for every one of these, 
the only difference you need to make it antibiotic is to either add four grams of carbon, like that carbon powder I was showing you, to your base mix, or four grams of H2O2. Boom, antibiotic off. That's it, right? So then, with all of this, you can pick your nutrition source, you can make it antibiotic, you can add other things, right? So fungi are big fans of azomite, glacial rock dust and other minerals. They're fans of gypsum, again, trace minerals. They're also fan, fans of acidity and alkalinity, right? So it, let's say you test the pH for the acidity of your water and it comes back as like five or six. Right? Fungi are still gonna grow in that, but they also like a pH in the 6.0 to 7.0 range, all the way up to eight. So to all of these base mixes, you could actually increase or lower the pH of the mixture. If you lower the pH, it's more acidic. If you raise the pH, it's more alkaline, right? And so I have here, sodium hydroxide tablets, which would let me lower the pH or otherwise set the pH of my mixture. What does this do? It makes the fungus grow faster. What does adding gypsum do? It pre-trains and also uh, gypsum and azomite, most molds and bacteria aren't gonna eat that stuff, right? So the more hostile you make it to those guys, the faster your fungus is gonna grow, the happier it's gonna be. So, in this video, I've covered all of these different recipes. And again, I stress that in each one of these, malt extract, honey, sorghum, potato dextrose, all you do to make an antibiotic is add four grams of carbon or HO2. But otherwise, all you're doing is you're just remixing this core idea, this core recipe. And that's it. And so, uh, before I leave you this time, here's all sorts of interesting things. Here is one pound of auger auger powder. This is my bottle of sorghum syrup. Trust me, you want to get a squeeze bottle. This, hydrogen peroxide, very useful to make antibiotic stuff. This is malt extract auger premix from a buddy of mine, tip of the cap mushrooms. Yes, I even use stuff from other folks because I like variety. And I love supporting other business and, and companies in the micro space. So for example, if I'm pouring sorghum plates, I've got my sorghum syrup right here. But let's say I want to make potato dextrose plates. Well, I don't want to boil the potatoes. I don't want to skin. I don't want to deal with any of that, right? So I just reach out to my buddy, tip of the cap, and I get some of this potato dextrose carbon mix, or I get regular old potato dextrose mix, and I can add that to my basic one liter bottle of water with 15 grams of lager powder, and I'm off to the races. Here's another example of, yeah, potato infusion and dextrose, right? So if I wanted to make PDA plates, I would add 20 grams of this, 15 grams of uh, auger auger powder, right? So here, at the end of the day, you have a large variety of things to choose from. And there's no perfectly right way, right? There's no, fungi are versatile, right? They're very flexible. They're gonna grow, basically, if they can grow, they will grow, right? So you can use MEA plates and you don't have to worry, you don't have to change it. You can use honey plates, sorghum plates, etc. Mixing this around is all about optimization and optimizing your grow and optimizing your fungal life cycle within your grow, right? So use what works best for you. So, there's that. I hope all of this has helped. In the final video, or at least the next video in the series, I'm going to actually make some of this. 
right? I've actually had to do some auger pours today. And I'm also going to touch on liquid cultures. Um, again, liquid cultures are just our basic auger recipe, but without any auger auger powder. I hope you enjoyed this one. And again, lots of recipes. Any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments. I'll be back in a few.